Hello friends, this is Rupesh from watching CPNet's video series on C++ and in this video we will be looking into this constructors and member initializer list. So this is a very interesting topic to discuss and the use of this is it initializes the data member of classes. So as you have this class here base you will be having this data member x. Generally what we do we create this and have this integer a and x is equal to a okay so this is your parameterized constructor and this is how we do this and let me just create this b10 and this is gonna work let me give this public here and compile and this is done it is compiled successfully so this 10 has gone to this x so and this is how we do this but there is something called member initializer which initializes the members and this is how it is done. You don't have to initialize this like this. What you have to do is after this bracket here round bracket put this colon or if you want to make it in new line you can do it like this also like base and colon and then you can start initializing but I prefer this one and generally you will get the code like this. So put the colon and the data member name x and the curly bracket and this a and you're done. So what is happening here you are saying that I'm going to use member in initializer list and this a is going inside this x. Now let's talk about this using this one and this one. Actually first let me compile and show you that it will work. See it has compiled and it is working. So as I said you can use this round bracket also instead of using this curly bracket there is no much difference see it has compiled now again but there is a difference this is a uniform initialization and this should be preferred over this round bracket initialization and the reason is this curly braces will check the narrowing and narrowing part is like this let's suppose you are having this character here and you are passing this 10 as an integer and you are going to assign integer inside x. So this integer is a 4 byte and this character is of 1 byte. So from 4 byte to 1 byte is called narrowing. So you are ultimately pushing your bigger data into smaller data. I mean bigger data type data into smaller data type data. So if this cannot hold that then you will have a problem. And we know that this character is of size 1 byte so it can hold at max 255. So if you will give more than that let's suppose you are giving 300 here then this 300 is not gonna go inside this x. Okay it will get round off and it will assign maybe 55 or something but not 300. And user doesn't get any warning if user is using this round bracket. So I'll just show you that. Let's compile this and see it has compiled successfully. There is no error. If you will print this, you will get some interesting thing here. So let's just print that and see out. Compile. Uh oh, I just forgot to. And this b dot print. Uh oh, it is printing this comma because this is going to get converted into ASCII code and as this is character it will print comma but let's make this integer and print this again so it is printing 44 so ultimately 44 is going inside this x not 300 and you didn't get any warning about that that is the problem and that problem is solved using this curly braces if you will compile it it will give you the warning even though it is Performing that see you get this 44 here, but you got the warning here see this one and this whole thing Okay, so if you are implementing something dangerous, you will get the warning So that's why you should always use this bracket. I mean this curly brackets Not this round bracket and I would Strongly recommend you should always use this initializer list to initialize your data members so you always have the option to initialize it like this. Actually, this is not initialization. This is assignment. This is assignment and this is initialization. This part. So initialization happens 
when you are constructing the data member but assignment happens later first you have to create the data member and then you have to assign so if you are using more than i mean if you are having more than member to initialize this is how you will do this let's have this integer y then you will be getting this integer y or make it z from here and using comma you can specify other data members so y and z so this z is going inside y and here you will pass maybe 100 okay and let's just quickly print that and just remove this integer 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 x so no need of this thing okay cool let's compile this see 300 and 100 so you have two parameters so one you will initialize like this then you will use this comma here then and initialize another one and similarly if you have n number of data members you can initialize using this comma operator here this was about how you can use it now now i have created a video where i have shown where are all those places where you have to use initializer list otherwise your program will not compile or whatever you want to achieve you won't be able to achieve without using initializer list i have given the link in the description field if you're interested where you can only use initializer list then you must see that video because see here you have the option right like you just no need to do it like this x is equal to a and y is equal to z and this is perfect but there are few places almost four to five places where you have to use initializer list and i strongly suggest go ahead and watch that video so for this video we'll keep it this much thanks for watching and if you like the video don't forget to hit the like button and make sure you subscribe to my channel to get the videos like this as soon as i publish them so i'll see you in the next video bye bye